Good afternoon, Honorable Professor G. D. Sharma, Vice Chancellor, University of Science and Technology, Meghalaya. Uh, the respected Dr. R. K. Sharma, sir, advisor to Vice Chancellor, University of Science and Technology, Meghalaya. Respected Professor Jinali Chetia, Dean, Department of Education, University of Science and Technology, Meghalaya. Esteemed speakers, Mr. Biraj Das, Superintendent of Police. Communication, Dr. Suresh Sundaram, Associate Professor, IIT Guwahati, and Dr. Shraddha Basu, Teaching Associate, Guwahati University. Dear faculty members, research scholars, and students, the Department of Education is your host and moderator for today's session. In this hard time, when all of us are trying to survive this pandemic, I wish and pray that every one of you are in your best of your health. It is a great pleasure indeed for us to conduct this webinar on cybersecurity and digital generation in the context of education. I hereby request our respected Dean Ma'am, Professor Junali Chetia, to kindly address the virtual gathering with her welcome speech. Kindly, Ma'am. Good afternoon to all you present here. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of PQSC School. Now, I bid warm welcome to our distinguished speakers who took their valuable time and join us. Really, we feel honored to have them with us. My special welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor G.D. Sharma, sir. Thank you, sir. Your presence graced the occasion, sir. I welcome our, this, our Sharma, sir. Our R.K. Sharma, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Now, this, this uh, topic of this, our, this uh, today's semi webinar, this is, uh, this is very significant. Because we live in the age of information and technology, and due to the outbreak of this COVID-19, our everything, every interaction is happening online. I hope this uh, this seminar, this webinar, will help to understand uh, this uh, cyber security, and it will help to uh, it will discuss the different aspect different phases of uh, changing education situation and i hope uh, this will help and everybody will know what is cyber security and how the education is changed due to the outbreak of this covid-19 uh, because everything is going on through inter going on through virtual mode um, my i hope this seminar will help you for us and the, all the participants will be beneficial, beneficial, benefit, get benefit from this webinar. Thank you, sir. Again, I am, uh, I am going to go to our this uh, organizer, that means faculty of, of education department and the psychology department who, uh, who made this webinar functional during this hard time. They have to take uh, classes from 10 to 4 o'clock, but still they are making this possible, this webinar possible. Thank you. My, th I am thankful to them, my, our, my faculty members. And once again, I, I welcome you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. It was indeed lovely to hear you. Now I request our honorable professor G.D. Sharma, vice chancellor, to kindly deliver the keynote address. Kindly, sir. Okay, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience due to some network in connectivity. Sir is unable to join. Okay, so moving on. With the context of today's webinar, the first discussion will be given by our esteemed speaker, Mr. Biraj Das, Superintendent of Police, communication on the topic dark web and its coked illegal activity. 
Mr. Das is currently serving as Superintendent of Police Communication, Assam. Prior to joining in police service, he served in a Chennai-based software company, Pantasoft. Subsequently, he joined Assam Police in the year 2000 as a Deputy Superintendent of Police Communication, being selected through Assam Public Service Com Commission, APSC. He played a pivotal role into commissioning of the police dial 100 control room for Guwahati City Police, which is a computerized GIS, GPS-based police dispatch system. Mr. Das also played an essential role towards monitoring of quarantined and infected person during the pandemic. He is also research person at Assam Administrative Staff College and Guwahati University in the field of cybercrime and cybersecurity. I now request, sir, to kindly take over the session. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon to you all. Well, uh, before packing into the presentation, I would like to say uh, something to all the participants. See, uh, I'll be not talking about the technological gizmos or the rocket science. I'll be emphasizing on the very basic fundamental elementary aspects of cyber technology. And uh, our fo main focus will be on dark wave. And uh, uh, about digital and, bef and before uh, speaking into the uh, uh, dark wave uh, session, Prior to that, I'll be discussing about the very basic things about a few slides about uh, digital technology. And see, uh, I will be not talking about how to investigate cyber crime, only things because these are the few challenges which uh, the law enforcing agencies are also being faced. And see, when we discuss certain things, because I know there's so many polymaths, uh, so many youngsters will be uh, participating in this uh, webinar. So certain things which you know, which these things gets embedded in your mind, then definitely when you attend other symposium or seminar or webinar, whatever. So these certain things you can place before them. So some kind of solution also uh, will be delivered to us or any other law enforcing agencies to curb the menace in the society. So for that, I have a very small comprehensive presentation that'll be uh, containing a few uh, audio video media files also okay sun tzu is was a chinese general in 470 bc and under which regime he was a general those those this history we are not going to discuss basically he was a historian military analyst and psychologist why he is famous for why i am bringing him in uh, to our discussion this is basically he has written a book the art of war most of the debate when the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, tussle goes on in uh, Doklam or any Indochina border. Arnav Goswami most of the time he shouts saying that China is adopting the art of war. So like what we have, like we had uh, Chanukko, the Koti Law Trusthastra, Chinese they have the art of war, the book. So I'm not going to talk about the art of war book's content, but only one thing I'm going to tell you. This is, he was talking about the advanced knowledge. What is advanced knowledge? See, like today, suppose before going out, if you come to know that today is going to rain, you cannot stop raining, you cannot stop the rain. But what you can do, if you have the knowledge, if you have the intelligence, if you have the input that is going to rain, then what you will do? You'll carry an umbrella. So if you, if you have kind of advanced knowledge and then the consequences which you might face, you can avert that by taking, adopting some kind of precautions. The same way, the cyber crime, it's, it's, a, it's an ocean, cyber crime, cyber security, it's an ocean, just a modicum of it I'm going to discuss with you. So this is also a kind of a advanced knowledge which I'm going to give you. It's just when before uh, we are getting into the webinar, I, I received a call. One of my uh, friends, uh, mother-in-law, uh, someone has duped near about 40,000 from his account, from her account. So see, due to lack of knowledge, due to lack of advanced knowledge, the poor lady had to face this kind of consequences. So in my day, it is as he, as because all of you know that this, actually we are already in the state of cyber war. So in cyber war, we don't know, but the enemy is unseen. The enemy is 
intangible that any mean logically I mean he doesn't have any kind of physical existence but his consequences are the magnitude of magnitude of its consequence we cannot even imagine in the subsequent slides i'll be explaining what i'm telling now and uh, he's actually for sharing whatever bit of knowledge i have and she's working the uh, law enforcement agency i'm just going to give you my uh, wisdom whatever wisdom i have that uh, that lock stock and barrel whatever knowledge i have for giving me this opportunity to interact with this uh, magnificent recent uh, participants in the webinar i i have to i must ex express my gratitude uh, to his excellency uh, bc of usdm professor gd sharma dr del dilwar hussein and of course so many others but constantly i was in touch with dr farija sadin she was so sincere and then uh, i i see was even probably i i came to know this he got an, a negative reply from my office but anyway encountering all these things they were very focused and then uh, actually i'm not a, i'm not person at par for addressing such kind of seminar also but this is i must tell that this is their magnanimity for giving me this opportunity to uh, give my deliver my delivers in, into this webinar and uh, see uh, this as i said this uh, magnitude mag magnitude of this kind of uh, cyber attack or cyber crime uh, this is 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 it is is it is, is magnificent and uh, or is, it is uh, we can't even express uh, i am sort of a proper vocabulary to express the, this uh, quantum or this magnitude of this kind of cyber attacks impact uh, since so like this is, uh, if we can remember, this is 2001, what uh, was happening in the World Trade Center in, in New York City. So like this, uh, just this was uh, very few people, they know that this was kind of a cyber attack. So this is a consorted effect. That's a the technique, what we call steganography. Steganography, we're not going to discuss today. So by adopting steganography, the, all the surveillance mechanism United States have, they could dodge that. So, so that's finally what happened that uh, more than uh, 2000 people it is around 2760 people died so this is the this looks uh, that's the cyber crime it looks very soft things but this can see the impact of this this is a flight of the american citizens so now it's all about digital electronics so just briefly talk about something what is digital electronics so digital electronics what this is it's all about logics. All it's a discrete in manner, binary zero and one. It it, it will be only one and zero. It will happen or it will not happen. It is on or it is off. And it doesn't have any physical existence. This is only used for what? This is used for storing of information. Information, as I said, it's a, it's for in the form of zero and one. Computing of information. If you store something, some information. Suppose you have clicked a picture using your mobile phone or using your uh, digital camera, then you can store the photograph. Then if you want, you can do morphing, you can edit the pictures. So this kind of computation you can do. And then you can communicate. That communicate is what? Email. We are sending through Bluetooth. We are saying, sharing our information through any digital means, which is digital manner, which is being connected through TCP IP network. TCP IP network is what? Transmission control protocol, internet protocol, which is, this is the protocol through which only the digital devices are gets connected. And now we are basically emerging into artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, we're not going to talk about that. And we have esteemed uh, uh, Dr. Sudesh uh, Sundaram, he's a associate professor of IIT. He'll be talking in details about intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. So, but one thing I must say, the most intelligent man in the globe, who was he? He was Sir, uh, 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 Stephen Hawkins. He was suffering from motor neuron disease. Motor neuron disease, because he's, uh, he, he cannot open and move, but his brain was functioning. So with the help of artificial intelligence, the most intelligent man in the globe, he was surviving. So he also to survive, he took the help of artificial intelligence. That is what I'm going, what I'm going to explain that, that artificial intelligence is, it is ruling us actually. We cannot even think of our life without the help of artificial intelligence. See, now one more slide I'm going to show you this is the significance of this slide you see a baby it has not been exposed to the physical world before that what it has been exposed to the cyber world see this is the impact this is the uh, 
control the cyber uh, technology or digital technology having in our life. Without this, I see, you can see uh, if uh, you can see the uh, 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 stress marks or uh, in the face of all the people, those if there is an internet connectivity is low, less, or if his computer is not working. So now just for only one my, uh, minor issue, it's see, like because of, uh, as Farija said, that, uh, as, uh, as one of our comparator said that, uh, because of uh, uh, due to lack of proper network connectivity, Professor G. D. Sharma sir couldn't address his keynote stress address because see now see it will work or it will not work. There are only two things in the digital technology. So in our life, see if there, there is no network connectivity, you won't be able to do our financial transaction. We will not be able to communicate with each other. Even the students, they won't be able to take uh, attend their classes because they, all the classes and even webinars, seminars, everything are on online. So now, without that, without the help of digital technology, we can't think of our life. So now, <coughs> I'll just I'll be talking about very few things. This is very required uh, for uh, the, and the, as an end user of digital technology. Just few lines about computer science. So now, somebody has must have to tell me. So all of you are using computer. All of all the participants all of, and then say like instantly, what happens when a computer is switched on? In one sentence, please, someone has to respond. Instantly, what happened? So, so everybody is logged on through your computer or, your, or any digital device. Have you ever noticed what happens when you switch on the computer? Instantly, what happens? What happens in your screen? What happens in your system? In one sentence or two sentences, can anyone, you must have to respond. Otherwise, I will not move forward. I think I'm audible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are perfectly audible. Participants, please kindly respond. Yes, See, sir, all of you switch. All of you switch on computer thousand times. Yeah. More than thousand times. Have you ever noticed what happens actually, Dr. Farija, Dr. Stradavasu, and so many others also? Without switching off your comp on on your computer, probably your daily work doesn't start. Yes, sir. It gets started. So like yes, computer, uh, computer boots, computer boots. Computer yeah, boots. boots up, it get started. Uh, apart from boot, anything else? Welcome to Windows. We come to Windows, okay. And the screen, sir. See, I tell you one thing. From today onwards, this this will, you are going to notice. See, even your car is also electronic device. Even your washing machine is also computer. Even your microwave oven is also com uh, computer. Your mobile phone is also computer. When you switch on a computer or any electronic device, see, the, in every system, he has to sell his, his diagnosis system. There's a self-diagnosis system. When you switch on the computer immediately, please listen it carefully. You have to share it. You have to resonate it to others also. So because all of all of us are using computer. Initially, what happens? This is a post. Post is what? Power on self test. Because as I told you in the at the very beginning, at the very outset. So in any digital device, it will work or it will not work. As I said, it is a, it's a burning example is Dr. Uh, Professor G. G. Sarma. Because his network didn't work, didn't work means he will not be able to communicate. That's, uh, that critical uh, critical moment uh, Sar has lost. We have lost. So now every digital device, digital computer, there is a self diagnosis system. This is called POST. It's very easily uh, remember. POST is what? POST power on self test. Power on self test. So when you switch on the computer, it's Instantly, there's a small program which is being embedded in your BIOS, basic input output devices of the system. There's a small program which is installed there that is called post power on self test. When you switch on the computer, this kind of a screen comes into your computer. What is it will check your minimum 
because when you that computer to load booting is what to load the operating system that someone uh, 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 participant also said then window comes before that the minimum hardware of a computer it has to work it has to work perfectly when you switch on the computer the post gets executed post get executed that self diagnosis system it will diagnose it will says this many ram ram has to work is keyboard has to work when it is check it checks all the uh, all the parameters of the computer when it checks a keyboard you will see the flash flash light the light will be flashing in the keyboard then it will has a computer has a built in uh, speaker logic when it's this the speaker logic then you will have a beep sound uh, then it will give you a, a beep sound then different all the uh, different it will check uh, if, if the uh, microprocessor is working perfectly or not if the hardware is working perfectly or not it will check each and every parameters in the computer that's parameter the minimum hardware which is required to put the system that hardware is called ipl this is not indian premier league this is initial program load the minimum hardware that's all the us term with instant your name